GMZ was founded in 1900 as the Grabowski Motor Company in Detroit by brothers Max and Morris Grabowski. Later, it was renamed the Rapid Motor Vehicle Company in 1902 when the brothers moved the operations to Pontiac, Michigan. In 1908, William C. Durant gained control of the Reliance Motor Car Company, another early commercial vehicle manufacturer. In 1909, Durant gained control of the Rapid Motor Vehicle Company and made it a subsidiary of his General Motors Company. In 1911, General Motors formed the General Motors Truck Company and combined Rapid Motor Vehicle Company and Reliance Motor Company into it. In 1912, the Rapid and Reliance names were dropped in favor of the one name, GMC Trucks, later to become General Motors Truck and Coach Division and marketed as GMC. I'm going to leave the colorful history of the origin of the General Motors Corporation for now to talk about the General, the premium over-the-road road tractor. Among the finest trucks produced were the GMC Astro, the GMC Brigadier, and the GMC General. The GMC General had a brother known as the Chevrolet Bison, and I did a video on the Bison a while ago, and you should go see it with the link below after you finish this video. The General, it was a heavy-duty Class 8 truck that was assembled by the GMC Truck and Coach Division of General Motors. The General was the largest conventional cab truck ever designed and produced by GM. The GMC General and the Chevrolet Bison were assembled in Pontiac, Michigan at the Pontiac East Assembly Plant alongside the Chevrolet Bruin and the GMC Brigadier. The GMC General and the Chevy Bison product line was introduced for the 1977 model year replacing the C90 M9500 trucks. After 1981, the Chevrolet Bison was discontinued, following the withdrawal of the Chevrolet heavy truck production. But the General lived on. In 1986, General Motors entered a joint venture with Volvo to produce heavy trucks. Mm leading GMC to end production of the General Conventional and the Astro Cab Over in 1987. After the product review of the fantastic IXO Models version of the GMC General, I'll talk about a General that starred in a Hollywood action film. And here we go guys, this is the GMC General. It's a 1980 model with Aero Sleeper, a big stand-up sleeper that really never made production. It was a prototype. Comes in the IXO packaging, and it also has a display base and clear display lid to keep it nice and clean if you take it out of the box. Without uh, getting it all dusty, you can leave it with that display base. Item number down here is TR079, 1980 GMC General. The truck is attached with just two Phillips head screws, and they use bigger Phillips head screws than usual, so it makes it even easier to get off than usual for an IXO model. And there it is with the display lid nice and clear to keep it very, very clean, and the plastic display base, which is really sharp. Has IXO models tampoed on there, and then 1980 GMC General and the item number of TR079 tampoed on the base plate and there it is out of the packaging isn't that sharp that beautiful GMC general in those colors silver with tricolor blue stripes man they picked a good-looking truck to run in the second Smokey and the Bandit movie maybe not quite the same as the original because people love that Kenworth but I actually like this old GMC uh, quite a bit better this one has chrome wheels and it has a red center cap on the front and it doesn't have red center caps on the back. In fact, it has 10 hole wheels on the front and two hole wheels on the rear. Kind of a unique combination there. 
it has that stand-up sleeper that was in the movie but in the movie it was fake it wasn't a real sleeper it was just a prototype and then it was the rumor is it was scrapped after the movie because they couldn't make a deal with the contract for the company that was actually making the sleepers they couldn't come to an agreement at GM over here on the side it has the GMC five-star general logo the five stars around and general there the hood latch molded into the body it has the little vent door there door handle nice chrome mirror chrome grab bar the cab on this one and the frame is die cast but this sleeper here it's plastic the windows are tampoed on they're just painted black but then again on the real one in the movie they were that way it has the little toolbox door there striping is very very good on this one fuel tanks are not chrome plated they are just painted silver with the steps molded in so are the battery boxes there quarter fenders are also only painted in silver this was a great looking truck now something that gmc did and on the general and chevy did on the bison is they had this little stainless piece that ran down the top on each side of the hood well on the models to do that they painted it they made that piece and then they chrome plated it they also chrome plated the front grille on other chrome parts you see here the air horns which are duals on the passenger side kind of an odd arrangement for this type of truck but that's what they are you have your individual roof lights here they're molded into the cab instead of individual pieces then they just tampoed them orange so that they would look like they have yellow lenses windows on this truck are hard ABS plastic to show off the interior and you have two high back seats inside that are painted in dark blue with a dark blue dashboard there's a black steering wheel also to make it look like a two-piece windshield there's a black tampoed bar in the center windshield wipers here that are coming up through the cowl are prototypical of the GMC General it would go over and they did a great job a little complicated but they just kept the whole windshield clean now if you look the cab is wider than the hood at this point because GMC used a wider cab than the hood and they didn't bring it out they just ran the hood pretty much straight into the cab and then they formed around oftentimes you'd see hanging on this side a lube finer and then on this side you always saw your air cleaner maybe you'd see two air cleaners depending on the engine front bumper here is chrome plated driving lights hanging down are also just chrome plated parts on that the surround around the grill is chrome plated but the grill itself is just painted silver headlights a quad headlights two single rounds on each side with individual headlights in them and then a chrome bezel around them box style uh, turn signals are mounted on top of the headlight pods and they are clear abs with some clear orange paint on them up here you can see the gmc is tampoed really nicely on the grill and then the gmc logo it has the five stars right there on the hood ornament really nice also GM put two grab handles right there which are really really useful for opening the hood round on the passenger side get your breather which is chrome plated with the striping that goes around it that matches the striping on the rest of the body they didn't make a clear window down here they just left it as a solid vent door should have been clear you got your single stack with grab bar on it and nice uh, molded in detail for the heat shield and then a nice uh, tailpipe coming out you don't have any battery boxes on this side so the fuel tank is pushed forward and then you got your steps here there's a mud flap on the back of each fender on each side as GM had two kinds of mud flaps one that was part of the fender a solid mold and then there's also just like a rubber one so they could head either way frame rails painted blue as you can tell and you can see that clear windows really really nice see the same old wheels chrome and nice uh, soft rubber tires on them round to the back kind of boring there's not a whole lot of detail here but there's a nice fifth wheel and it does pivot it's made out of plastic a uh, different tread tire than the other ixo truck that I've talked about and it has nice drive tread your quarter fenders 
there's where your air lines would hook up, but there's no air or electric lines on the back of the frame of this truck. Also, here is the mud flap brackets. They just painted them silver, and the mud flaps painted silver. License plate bracket there, and then two brake lights with red tampos for brake lights. They could have done a little better detail there, but overall they've done a good job so far. Underneath, rear differentials. Air ride suspension, but no air brake canisters. But you see the airbags for the air ride suspension. Drive shaft, drive shaft, front leaf suspension, front axle, no connecting rod to, for the tie rod for the steering. Uh, transmission brace, bottom of the engine and bottom of the transmission detail. It has 143 and GMC General molded into the base of the sleeper, which is painted black. And you can see the offset style for the fuel tanks plus the battery boxes there. Again, no steerable axle on this truck. But it's still a really, really nice truck in 43rd scale. And to get a trailer for it would be amazing. And that is the 1980 GMC General made by IXO Models. It's a die-cast cab, die-cast frame, and a plastic sleeper box. Wasn't that a cool model? Now, that truck was a movie star, and I'll bet most of you have seen the movie. The truck used in Smokey and the Bandit was not used in filming Smokey and the Bandit 2. The original truck was a Kenworth W900. The filming of Smokey and the Bandit 2 used a GMC General that was loaned to the producers by General Motors in hopes to advertise the GMC's new premium over-the-road truck and their prototype sleeper compartment. This was a special sleeper put on the General used in the filming of Smokey and the Bandit 2. There were three Generals built with that sleeper. All three were prototype sleepers. Sadly, the sleeper was never put into production. It was made by the Able Body Corp and was the same sleeper used on Fords and Macs of that time period, but with new upper windows. The first movie, it was a big hit at Pontiac showrooms for GM, and they were hoping the same would happen for the second movie. So, not only did they provide a new Turbo Trans Am, they also loaned the producers the GMC General to be the starring truck. Truly, GM made a mistake with the first movie by not providing the starring truck. I mean, what a promotional bonanza. GMC launched an all-new premium over-the-road truck in the same year a major motion picture was featuring a rebel truck driver. And that movie would go on to become the second highest grossing film of 1977. Only the Star Wars film topped it. <laughs> Talk about a missed opportunity. They corrected the mistake, though, for the second movie. And I'm sure it paid off again at the Pontiac dealers and this time at the GMC truck dealers. After the movie, the general was returned to GM for the rest of the promotional campaign for that new sleeper. Unfortunately... Times were not great in 1980, so the sleeper project was scrapped. <laughs> Probably another major blunder for GMC, as stand-up sleepers were on the cusp of taking over the market. As a result of ending the sleeper project, the three GMC Generals with the General's Quarters sleeper had the sleeper removed and sold off as day cabs. The Smokey and the Bandit 2 GMC General movie truck included. However, for you big movie truck fans, you'll be happy to know that the Snowman's General is still around today. While limited supplies last, get one of GMC's promotional truck and Snowman's Smokey and the Bandit 2 General by IXO with the links down below. 
also go on and sponsor me over on my Patreon page with another link down below. Thanks for watching everyone. Please go on and smash that like button, share this video, and subscribe to my channel. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'm going to be back soon with another episode of Toy Talk.